in the trenches with Teddy Daniels. All right, guys, Teddy Daniels here. Welcome to another podcast of In the Trenches. Today we've got Dave Reagan. Uh, Dave is a very influential person in the community. Uh, he runs a nonprofit, and he actually runs a Facebook page. Uh, what is it, Take Back America? Take Back America move. All right, so a little background on Dave. Uh, we did a little research. Uh, Dave's interests are puppies and pole dancing. So Who doesn't like puppies and pole dancing? We're going to start. Dave, I, I want you to tell people about Veterans Promise, your nonprofit, and what exactly it is that you do with that. Wow, that's a, that's a big question. Uh, Veterans Promise is a lot of stuff in our community. You know, we do suicide prevention, drug and alcohol addiction prevention. We have uh, drug and alcohol meetings twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. PTSD groups on the uh, fourth and second Thursdays of the month. Uh, we have a small hardship grant program. In our building, we have a wall of heroes that is designed for the veterans that we lost here on the home front to drugs and alcohol and the suicide. So there's nothing like uh, what we have here, right here in Dixon City. And, and we help anybody that we can in between. You know, if we can improve a veteran's or a family of a veteran's quality of life, that's what we try to do. And that's why my phone never stops ringing. <laughs> well, it's not ringing now, so that's good. You turned it off so we can get this done, okay? Now, Dave, I want to talk to you about uh, the Facebook group that you started. Can you give us the name of that again? So it's called Take Back America Movement. And what, what is the goal? What is the, the purpose of that movement? And what made you want to start that Facebook group? So really what it came down, it was a very simple thing. I had a friend of mine that uh, is a local businessman. He owns a jewelry store. And he, like everybody else, is watching the news uh, and watching what's going on in our country and watching, you know, uh, how these cities are getting, you know, rioters and destroying property and people are getting killed. And he said to me, he said, Dave, what happens if this comes here? And I like to think I'm a man of some answers. I don't say I know them all, but I, I, I do recognize the fact that uh, at least in this part of my life, um, there are people that will listen when there's, uh, you know, I put something out there and say, hey, we need help or, or this or that. So when I started the, the Take Back America movement page, it was literally with the thought of we will not allow this here in Northeast Pennsylvania. Uh, we, we have patriots here that believe you're not, you're in that. We're not going to allow what? We're not going to allow a takeover like they've allowed in Seattle or you know, different parts of the country you know, where they're rioting in Minnesota and preaching and yelling in the middle of City Hall, in the middle of uh, you know, Town Hall. I mean, uh, that is a government building. The people should be able to protest but not destroy property not disrupt the the laws that we have in our country now i talked earlier today i actually put a video out about the the black lives matter movement the movement with antifa and you were actually there with me we we rode over together for the black lives matter protest in scranton a couple days ago and i mentioned earlier in in a video that i put out uh about that young black guy that came over and started talking to us and, and I'd like you to comment on that as well well again I mean I think uh, in that circumstance people you know it was almost in, in some ways it was sad to me in a way because when we pulled up there on our motorcycles and you know uh, we're just everyday guys in my opinion um, just trying to make sure everything's going to be safe and protect our community people seem to be scared a, a little bit or alarmed at least and um, when, that, when that kid came over to us, um, you know, it was refreshing to me to, to hear uh, a, a youth uh, and a young black youth have the opinions of what we, you know, what I see. I, I see this movement, which, again, what happened to George Floyd is an absolute travesty. You've said it. I've said it. No one, no one condones the behavior of those bad cops. And they should be held to the full extent of the law and prosecuted to the full extent of the law. But this movement has turned into 
something more of, you know, uh, a political agenda. And to me, if Black Lives Matter wants to change our country and change the community, you don't do it by having businesses destroyed, people killed. You do it by going and having meetings with legislators. You sit down with police chiefs. You talk about policies. You come up with ways that your community can, can support that type of behavior so it never happens again. Let's give inner city kids more resources, okay? Let's, let's get single you know, mothers more support at home so that their kids can grow up with, with more support so when they become adults, they don't have the problems that these inner city kids are having. You know, it, it's, it's tough. What do you think that people right here in Northeast Pennsylvania, what do you think that they can do with this entire Black Lives Matter movement and the protests that are going on? We've seen them happen in Scranton, Carbondale. I saw, uh, I believe, don't quote me now, I believe it was either the mayor or the police chief of Wilkes-Barre took a knee for, for George Floyd. Um, and again, let, let's be honest about the whole situation. Uh, guys, I, I don't bullshit people, and I'm going to give it to you straight. These white kids, they were primarily all white kids at this. 75% was white females. And then of the other that looked like they came right out of the suburbs. Right. These are the same people. And, and and that guy we were talking to there even said it. These are the same people that would call the police on him if he was walking up the street in their neighborhood. That's a problem. A the the actions don't match the rhetoric. Okay. Um, and I think that's an issue. And. With all these protests going on, and, and now it's starting to come to northeast Pennsylvania, and you've seen six city blocks in Seattle being taken over, what can the people here do to keep these protests from affecting them? How do we keep those agitators from doing what they want to do in Scranton and Wilkes-Barre? How do we keep them from doing that? Well, again, I think what it comes down to is it's it's a common sense thing. You know, we as Americans, we're we're we have the right to, for that pursuit of happiness. You know, in the Bible, it talks about how you're supposed to love thy neighbor. You know, to me, those are values that are very important. And you know, really, what it comes down to here in Northeast Pennsylvania is I feel that they have strong values of of loving thy neighbor, and let's stick together and let's protect what is ours and. You know, the way to do that, again, is, you know, be plugged in with law enforcement. Be plugged in with the decision makers. Try to assert yourself in a way that doesn't come across as, you know, I'm here to, to incite a riot, but I'm more here to be a part of the solution. Let's try to come to some type of solution. And, and let's face it, this issue, I mean, it's never going to go away. There's always, it's always going to be there. And we have a responsibility in our country to uphold that all men are created equal. And, and we, we've said this, I've heard you say it, you've heard me say it. When we wore that uniform, we didn't see color. We only saw the uniform to the left and right of us. And, and, and there's, there's a time as a patriot, and I look at myself as a patriot, and I know you're a patriot, you know, there was a time when the protests for the NFL, right, People would criticize and say, well, you know, that patriotism is turning you into a racist because you're not supporting the well, movement. I, I, I think the big thing is when you disagree with anything, and, and I hate to turn it right or left, Republican or Democrat, I think people have become too comfortable now that when you disagree, the f and they cannot defend their issue. The first thing they want to do is yell racist. And then, you know, 
I, I've seen this happen to so many good people, and then they got to go through their Facebook and they got to post up pictures of them with their black friends, and you know, just to prove that they're not. You, you know what? People are going to say what they're going to say. They're going to do what they're going to do. Live your life, and brother, I've been called every name in the book. Okay, and when you defeat somebody's argument and they have nothing left to say they open that box and they pull out that golden brick that says racist and, and hey l l let's be honest i don't look like a choir boy okay dave either either do you you know i mean we're covering tattoos i got the shaved head it's easy for anybody to point their finger at me and say oh that guy's a white supremacist you know what kiss my ass all right the problem is, is people judge people by looks. They judge people on associations. And they want to lump people into groups. And, and I think the days of personal accountability are gone. I agree. Are gone. So the, the, this whole issue now with everybody rioting against the police, and now they want to defund the police. You know, it wasn't hundreds of thousands of cops across the country that did this to George Floyd. No. It was one guy. And three or four that stood there and watched. Okay? Those are criminals. They're being and, and honestly, this is the quickest I've ever seen Absolutely. a case like this prosecuted. Okay. Um, they're getting the justice that they deserve. I don't understand. Now they're 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 tearing down statues. They took uh, Elmer Fudd's gun, okay, and they want to Ban Chase from Paw Patrol. And, and guys, let me tell you about Paw Patrol. I have a three-year-old. I've seen every episode at least 150 goddamn times. Okay? And Chase is the one character that's tolerable for me. That's what keeps me going back to Paw Patrol. Uh, the fireman dog I can't stand. The one in the dump truck, the digger, <laughs> is just annoying. The the dog that flies with the helicopter gets on my goddamn nerves. I can deal with Chase. I can deal with the police dog on Paw Patrol. And like I said, I've seen every episode at least 150 times. So, but now they're going to take away the dog from Paw Patrol. Okay? Y y you know what? We can't counterculture everything, and we can't go back. And everybody's offended by everything anymore. And I, and I, I honestly, guys, I, I, you know, we use this platform, but, but I think technology and the Internet have made so many people comfortable with disrespecting other people without getting punched in the mouth for it, okay? You didn't have this when I was a kid. You didn't have it at all. But now everybody's offended by everything. So, Dave, you, you, you know, um, with Veterans Promise, how long has that organization, how long has that been around? Because you do do a lot of good work for vets. So Veterans Promise will be four years old in November. Okay. Um, we are, I mean, moving mountains in our community um this will be the well this this year with the covid you know would have been our banner year for sure but um you know we've had some setbacks and donations and that kind of thing and we have a ride coming up in august and you know we'll hopefully be able to promote that at some point but yeah it'll uh, cost you though yeah i'm sure you know uh <laughs> piece of stromboli <laughs> brother i feed you every time that, you absolutely you do and i and believe me i ain't going hungry neither to see it by the way you know what i mean <laughs> I'm, I'm healthy. <laughs> we're both healthy um but yeah i mean uh, veterans promise has been around for a while and and we've really become you know again a, a gap filler you know for when people just don't know who to call they give, they call us, and you know, um, we're able to help provide referrals and resources. So a lot of times, it's not even us doing the work, but just the fact that there's somebody that can answer the phone. Uh, I'll give you an example. So if somebody calls up and says, "Look, they're a combat vet and they need counseling," sometimes we can provide that ourselves, but most of the time, I'm going to say, "Look." I'm going to send you to the vet center and I'm going to have you call this counselor by name and tell him that I called, tell him that I told you to call. So now that veteran's not calling a blind call. He has a name and a contact and he's also being told 
to tell them that I told him the call. So, now Dave, I'm a, I'm a wounded vet. I'm 100% disabled through the VA. So your, your organization fills those gaps that the VA doesn't, correct? Correct. Okay, perfect. Let people know how they can get in touch with you and Veterans Promise. So, uh, and, and hold on, before you put your number out there, just to let the women know that Dave is a self-proclaimed ladies' man. Um, he is single. There we go. And you do have a hot tub, don't you? I do have a hot tub. He does have a hot tub. Not been in it yet, but... No, not yet. i got to dig my Speedos out. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but he is single, does have a hot tub, and just built an amazing deck. Red, white, uh, and blue. From what I understand, he has a velvet water bed, too. So... Go ahead, give your information out. Now, don't flood my page, ladies, with the request for Dave. Make sure you contact Veterans Promise or uh, take back the American movement, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah, so you can contact Dave on there as well. So go ahead and give him your info there. So Casanova. our information for Veterans Promise is uh, the Veterans Promise NEPA Facebook page. You can also email us at veteranspromise22 at gmail. Our telephone number is 570-892-2060. And uh, that phone number will ring right to my cell phone when there's nobody in the office. Say that again. Ladies, make sure you get this number. 570-892-2060. Man, my phone rings enough. Yeah, now and I ride a Harley, Teddy. And, yeah, and he's got a Harley. Even though it's an old man one. Hey, one. it's old school. We rode today. Rode for, we, we had, a fallen, had a fallen veteran, a World War II veteran. Their family reached out to us two days ago and said, can you get some motorcycles to escort my grandfather? And um, yeah, we had about 40 bikes today. And not a huge turnout, but a short notice, pretty pretty good. And, you know, again, those are the types of things. Well, Dave, that a uh, couple months back, that World War II veteran, through to this big COVID thing, they weren't going to allow him a uh, military funeral. You were involved in putting that on. Yep. I mean, to me... The government was trying to govern common sense out of the American people, and we need to put an end to that. So if a veteran needs to be laid to rest with honors and, and, and dignity and with respect that they're supposed to get, you know, if there's one thing I could say here in all this interview that I think is the most important thing I can say. Besides you're a single guy with a hot tub. Besides that, the only difference between myself and Teddy. Is I'm married and have kids. Right, and, and, and he's a lot sexier than I am is when we are laid to rest okay we're gonna get that flag okay other people that are not veterans and don't serve they're not gonna get that honor so that's why that flag means so much to us that's why laying these veterans to rest with the honors and dignity that they deserve and respect means so much to us that's why we are willing to stand out there when there is a national pandemic and whatever you want to call it and and put ourselves out there and say this needs to be done because it's that important if they take that away from us what in the hell do we have left right well dave i gotta tell you i want to thank you for coming out today riding your bike over uh it's always a pleasure we get together and we ride a lot uh, you put on a lot of great stuff in the community, and I'm honored to be a part of it. And uh, I want to thank you again for coming out and being on this podcast. And uh, go ahead and give your contact one more time for those who are going to need it. So Veterans Promise NEPA on Facebook, veteranspromise22 at gmail.com, and then 570-892-2060 is our phone number. And, 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 then, again, and then you have his toll-free line, which is 1-800-BIG-SEXY. Yeah. So you can always reach him there as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, again, there's a lot more to me than, you know, I do a lot for veterans and that kind of thing. And, you know, I'm involved with Pennsylvania Bikers for Trump and, you know, this Take Back America movement. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of layers to things, you know. But really, I just want to help people. You know what I mean? I... I, I've had a, a terrible set of circumstances at one time in my life, and I've worked very hard to overcome those circumstances, and I still work on them every day, but helping people 
and being around the right people is a real thing that's really got me to have great people in my life like Teddy and everybody that's watching. So for all you guys that are out there, thank you for being a part of me getting better and, and being able to be a good person. So good. All right, brother. I give you a hug. Oh, thanks for coming out, man. Appreciate it. Love you. And this is In the Trenches with Teddy Daniels. Oh, yeah. See you next time. In the Trenches with Teddy Daniels.